Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wolfie and I'm here with Zenrod. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire lives to watching every single Shonen Jump anime out there that is available to us in English, starting with Gintama and eventually getting back to Kuroko's Basketball as soon as it's possible to return to it. And today... And Yu-Gi-Oh! GX one of these days. And Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I, I have... I, we have not forgotten about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX either. <laughs> uh, we need to return to that as well. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Kintama, and we're going to be going over the Kintama arc, which is episodes 253 and 256. And this is also technically the start of uh, Gintama Overtime, or Gintama Into Chosen, something like that, uh, which, uh, sure. yeah. We'll take longer I'm to explain. Keep calling it Gintama. Yeah, we are going to keep calling it Gintama, and <laughs> I will explain it later when we get to episode two sixty five. What happened here? Because I'm still looking for the explanation. I don't call I don't call Shippuden Naruto Shippuden either, unless I have to specify that I'm not talking about part one. No, I just call it all Naruto. That's so. that's very fair. This it's more of a of a deep thing of like of all the weird things that was going on with the Gintama anime things. But thankfully for us, unless uh, just for us, we don't have to deal with any of that. It does. It's just all Gintama. <laughs> anyway, let's start with episode uh, two fifty three, which is smart because it's the start of this arc, which technically has two titles. Um, uh, which I think the first title is Nobody with Natural Straight Hair Can Be That Bad, and then later on it's revealed to be a different title. But go ahead, Zen, start us off. So, Gintoki comes back after a six-month vacation. Insert Venom meme how many months Gintoki <laughs> oh, yeah. is on vacation. <laughs> yeah, six months. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, only to find out that everyone has forgotten about him and he has been replaced with his perfect opposite, uh, Sakata Kintoki, mm -hmm. um, which apparently that, that's the one that means testicles, right? Uh, no, Kintama. Kintama means testicles. Kintama means testicles. Kin, okay, yeah, kin, right, Kintoki right. is who Gintoki is actually based off of, which is the fairy tale man Sakata Kintoki, and then Gintoki is based off of him, and so they took his name and made a character after him. <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, oh, what's going on? Clearly I must be in the wrong anime. I got too drunk and I'm in the wrong anime right now. Mm -hmm. uh, only to find out that he's, in fact, in the correct anime. And so he's like, all right, I got I to gotta figure out how to get my life back. We had 60 DVDs. We had six <laughs> volumes of DVDs worth of time together. Um, and eventually he snaps and starts attacking Kentoki with them. But Shinpachi and Kagura uh, stop him. And then he goes around and finds out that basically like every other character also has forgotten him. And he's like um, at his wit's end. He's at a bar like drinking. And Kintoki shows up and he's like, oh, I know who you are, but there's nothing you can do about it. Everyone thinks that I'm you. What if you're actually the crazy person and you are inserting yourself into my life? And he eventually is just like, "Yep, I'm just a, I'm just a side character. I, I'm, no, I'm a nobody." But then he gets found by Sadaharu and Tama, and they reveal that there actually is some fuckery going on. And the only people who it did not impact are Sadaharu, Tama, and Gintoki himself. Um, and because she gives like the speech about how um, Kintoki's. Uh, gold is fake but the the silver light that gintoki gives off is genuine and real and all this stuff and all that uh and she gives him his sword back and he carves the episode title into a building and then they go to confront kintoki but he's like i don't really want to like break up my house it's my house i don't want to like destroy <laughs> it fighting this guy and so she drags him off to the side and she gives him a, a user guide and he's like well this is not a I, I don't that there's no user manual this is a human being this is not a robot and then he shows up with his head taken off and tom was like no he's a robot and then the episode ends yeah and the, his manual looks exactly like a like a gunpla they, they call it like a, a ginpla or something like that it's not 100 percent the same um, but he does yeah, have... they, well no I think it's in the next episode where they call him a Ginpla. I don't think it's in this one. Oh okay. But he does definitely does I, when he's when I think he's... the reveal the reveal that he's not real is like the very end of this one. Yes, and the picture he's holding he's holding the Gundam shield. 
that's what I remember is that I think in, yeah, in, the, in, in the beginning of the next one, they flick through the user manual and it shows him holding the gun and the shield from Gundam. <laughs> okay. And it's like new Ginpla line. That's, yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. That's episode 253. How'd you like it, Zen? It was good. It was funny. Um, I liked the bit where he shows up super wasted and he's like, wait, why does nobody remember me? Um, I was very surprised by the turn that it was a robot. <laughs> I thought there was some fuckery going on, and he was a person. The fact that he was a robot was very surprising. Yeah. Um, and I like that Tama gets to do stuff. I, I enjoy Tama. I, I do like uh, seeing Tama. I like that Tama is basically the number one Gintoki uh, fangirl. Yeah, um, it's like what, he's the only one that likes him. The, who absolutely loves him. Literally, her defensive system is just literally Gintoki. She made an OC of Gintoki. It's very endearing how much she just absolutely loves this man. <laughs> She's like, she feels like one of those people who would go like, no, literally, that that's my goat right there. That man over there washed up naked after being abused on a big exam. That's my guy right there. <laughs> it's my that's my boy. Yeah, well, that was a big Sam, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the first thing. I, so there's <laughs> when he's having a bad time, he starts getting whipped by a bunch of dudes. He's on like a big Zam, but it's like pink. And I was looking like, is that fucking big Zam? And then <laughs> later on, he he's like dead on top of it, and he's burnt out. And I'm like, holy shit, that is literally just big Sam. <laughs> big Sam. Oh my god, it's Big Zam. He's there, he's everywhere. It's really funny. The only thing I remember Big Zam from is Gundam Battle Assault 2, where he's a giant boss battle. Oh man, one of the... Yes, the boss... I also know him from that. I know he's from the first Gundam series. Uh, don't spoil me, because I'm go currently going through original Gundam. So <laughs> don't tell me what Big yeah, Zam no does. No spoilers in the comments. No spoilers in the comments. But, I, but yeah, similar to you, I know him from the fighting game. He's just fucking massive. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I also really liked the beginning of this episode. It was a good kind of mystery bit at the beginning. I liked the, the six months. I didn't put the Venom thing together until you just said it right now, but that's also mm -hmm. pretty funny. Six months. Six months. Oh my god, there's a conspiracy going on here. I like them referencing the fact that they've been gone for six months legitimately. Uh, I like it when he, uh, carves the real name of the, of the episode into the stone, uh, which is called Nobody With Straight Blonde Hair Can Be That Good, which is the, e like, the, I guess the evil, dark, fucked up version is the one that we see at the beginning, and this is the real title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like that the OP and ED go as far as to, like, literally replace Gintoki with, uh, yeah, Gintoki he's in, in it. Yeah, he's in the also, this is this is for the, the last episode, but I like when they insert Gintoki back in it. Um, he's like being shitty instead of like awesome. Like this guy's being cool to everybody, <laughs> but when Gintoki's back in it, he's being an asshole. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I also like the OP and ED. I thought they were pretty good. The ED for I was like trying to figure out what does this remind me of, and then I finally figured out what it reminded me of. The beginning of it kind of reminded me of parts I think of Radio Gaga or something like that. Like there's something like the way he specifically sings, and I'm like, this sounds so specific, but I know I have never heard this being said in Japanese before. <laughs> so I think it's like the inflection that he puts on the song. But uh, either way, uh, yeah, I liked it. It was a good start from one, and uh, I like the, all the Gundam jags, the jokes that they're able to get in there now. And yeah, good start for this arc. Let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 254, Kintoki and Gintoki. Go ahead, son. 254, uh, Thomas explains how Gen Guy is the one who made him because uh, he was going on vacation and so they were they were like mad at him, so they wanted him they wanted to like make a stand in for him while he was on vacation. So they ended up making Kintoki, who uh, is like the perfect version of him, which is why he's gold instead of silver. Also, the logo for the show is in gold now, um, which is yeah. very funny. Because of but, kin means gold and gin means silver. Yes. Um, and so uh, he's been using their, like, some sort of radio wave to, like, fuck with people's memories to replace Gintoki with him in them. Uh, so that's why Tama and Sadaharu were not, like, impacted by this. Yeah, because it doesn't work uh, and on she's animals like, and she's a, she has them yeah, in her memory bank. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And so she's like, so the way that we're going to get him is because he presents himself super perfectly right now. And, but, but all he did was paste himself over you in their memories in the past. So in the past, he's a bubbling fuckhead like you are. But now he's like super suave. So we're going to use that to make them question what happened and all that stuff. Um, they end up going to the uh, cabaret bar or whatever it is where Otai works. And they're trying to steal their work to like overshine Kentoki, but it doesn't work. Uh, first off, because Kentoki starts beating Kentoki with the <laughs> thing they're supposed to fix. He starts attacking him again. Uh, but then Tama goes to do it, but Kentoki does it better than she does and fixes it. And eventually they're at, at the, I think also they try to get the poop throwing monkey down and that doesn't work either. Um, but then they finally have a, someone who's going to jump off the ledge. Um, and they have to like talk the person down and Tama's like, oh, of course the Kentoki can't possibly understand what's going on in a human soul because he's a robot but gintoki does and he does like this slow-mo run like he's gonna grab the jumper to stop her and then it cuts to him drop kicking kintoki <laughs> and every time he hits him even in the last episode when he's beating him with the dvds he's always like oh the weight of this whatever this thing is made me slip and i, I, I don't know why i'm hitting you with it and he does it here too when he jumps um but the, the jumper is uh, Sachan in a wig who was trying to do it just to get attention. Uh, and so Gintoki ends up pushing her off. And Gintoki's like, aha, they'll hate you now because you just killed her. But then Gintoki jumps after her and tries to break the fall for her so she doesn't die. And then Sadaharu, Shinpachi, and Kagura all catch him. And at that point, Gintoki's kind of like, you know what, you guys? you guys are our heroes and I'm proud of you and I'm not going to try to force my way back into your lives or whatever. And he goes to leave, but then they start thinking like, wait a minute, who is that dude? I remember that dude. Um, Sachan also is in love with Gintoki again after being rescued. Um, and everyone's like kind of realizing that Gintoki is different now. Cause he used to be more like Gintoki and now he's not, um, and then Tama is like, are you really giving up? And he's like, of course I'm not giving up. And you think I'm just going to, you think I'm going to give up? Uh, and so Tama's like, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back and uh, rest and you should too. And then she gets jumped by Kintoki, right? As the episode ends. Yep. All right. How'd you feel about this one? It was good. It was, it was good. I like the, the running joke that he just keeps beating him with like, oh, this, <laughs> oops, it was so heavy. The funniest one is the original DVD one where he's like, oh, the six volumes worth of DVDs that I have are so huge. I, I also like it because that comes back at the end of the last episode when he says, is this the power of 60 volumes of DVDs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah when he's about to say like, is this the power of friendship or whatever? He is. He says, is this the power of six <laughs> volumes of DVD? <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, I liked a lot of the trying to remember and him trying to like replace him. I also liked the bit where when uh, they come in as the new version of Odd Jobs, uh, um, Tama is there as Kagura and she's like, I'm Tama Kagura. And then he calls her like something, I think she calls him like Mantama. And then she goes, it's not that, it's Tamaka- It's Tamagara. It was like, okay, whatever. And I think that comes back later at the end of the show when there is something called Montama and they do a, a whole bit near the end. I just thought it was funny when she was doing it there. Um, Shinpachi is replaced with Sadaharu and there's no difference other than Sadaharu has glasses. Yeah, he's just wearing the glasses. <laughs> he's just wearing the glasses and so that's the perfect stand-in for him right there. Um... I like that when they're fixing it, the Tama uses her ability to speak to machines and she starts to convince him like, hey, man, she's like telling her to basically don't be with this guy because he's not worth your time. And then Kintoki goes into her mind. He goes like, oh, yeah, he's a robot. He can do the same thing. And then he ends up getting him back together with the man that she shouldn't be with. Yeah, which which apparently the toxic boyfriend is a rice cooker. Yeah, is a rice cooker. And then they sing a song. And then I forget what the, I think it's uh, like Oversoul or something. And then, Oversoul, I think. Yeah. And they ended on this one. And then the next time that they go help um, 
the next it's person. The shit, it's the shit throwing monkey. Yeah, it's, yeah. With, when uh, he Dugum. saves the shit throwing monkey, they sing over Soul again at the end. And then he goes like, "Why? Are you, first of all, do you always have to sing that song?" And also, second, Tama, get the hell away from them. So, what are you guys? <laughs> you guys are on my team. Where are you guys over there? <laughs> um, I the uh the bit with Sachan is also funny because when she's up on the roof and they're trying to get her off there, Kintoki is going with, by the approach of like, if you really wanted to do it, you wouldn't make such a spectacle of it. And then Kintoki is saying like. Man, I just don't see a point of living anymore. And he's actually so more depressed than she is. Um, yeah, he's, he's like, what Tom is like, yeah, of course. When someone sees someone that's in even an even more pathetic state than them, they'll hesitate. They'll hesitate because they see that their life isn't that bad. And it's really funny because he's like, uh, I think he says something to like, I don't think anyone will listen to me. And then uh, Suki at the bottom goes like, I'll talk to you. And then they're like, wait a minute, you're not involved in this. What are you doing? And I think it's really funny that on a deep level, she somehow still is able to follow along with Gintoki's stupid jokes. <laughs> like, that's the true sign that that's actually the real person, is that when he makes this dumb joke, she's immediately following up with like, don't worry, if there's no one there to talk you through the bad times, I'll talk to you through them. <laughs> And yeah, then when he, it looks like he's gonna, Tama thinks it was like, oh, she, when she gives her speech about like, oh, this is it, he's finally gonna be the one to save her, and it looks like he's gonna be the one to save uh, the girl who's gonna be killing herself, then he does the whole joke about attacking Kendoki instead, which is really good. Um, and then after he saves her, there's a bit where they're talking about him specifically, about like, I don't know who this guy is, but there's something about him. And she says specifically, like, I'm not trying to cheat on Kintama, but there's something about this Gintoki. Uh, I'm not trying to try cheat on Kintoki. There's something about this Gintoki, though. Um, I'm trying to wonder why I would be attracted to this loser. And then someone pops up and says, like, it seems like you're just attracted to it's men who the, fail. It's the, um, it's the woman from the prostitute village the prostitute yes city. the the one in the, the leader the, of it yeah yes, whatever her name in, is i don't remember her name the but, one in the wheelchair the, the right yeah one. the one who can't walk yeah yes she comes in and says you're attracted to men who fail <laughs> <laughs> which is probably a very accurate statement about why such unlikes it's as also as... funny that that's how they start putting together that that kintoki used to be different because he doesn't he's not a failure and she likes him so it doesn't make sense <laughs> Yep, there's just like nothing going together in this. And I think it might be this episode as well where Katsura's hanging out with Hasegawa and he starts mentioning about like, hey man, do you remember all the good times we laughed? And then Hasegawa has the fucking funniest response of, I don't think we ever hang out with each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we've ever been so on episode me hanging out with each other and laughing together. And he goes like, oh man, but you know what? We're really missing someone else. <laughs> And it feels like that's him remembering Gintoki, but uh, I really did like that bit. And from this point on, him and Hasegawa are, like, next to each other, which is really funny because I don't think that they actually hung out that much together. And the way he just, like, casually brings up is, like, I don't remember laughing with you all that much, to be real with you. <laughs> I don't think we are. Uh, really good. And then uh, there's also a bit with Tama when she's talking to Gintoki where she's giving him this pep talk after he's like basically said like made his peace about like hey as long as they're okay i'm gonna go with that and then she says something along the lines of like i realized something about you is that no matter what you're always gonna want to be by yourself um which i thought is very uh it is a little bit sad of like realizing how much she knows him and because of all the previous arcs she's with been with him is that there's something deep down in Gintoki that even though he has all these friends that there's a part of him that just wants to do things by himself and he doesn't want to involve anyone else for whatever reason and she's come to accept it and the thing that she wants most from him is like it's fine because if you think that I'll ever be angry about you doing this I'll never be angry about that as long as you promise to always uh bring me with you I thought it was a very cute uh, scene together. And then he even mentions, like, man, where'd you learn that from? And she's like, I watched, I learned it from Catherine's K-dramas. He's like, I need to watch those K-dramas the next time I try to pick up a woman. Yeah, he was <laughs> like, I'm going to add that to my list for you, picking up girls. For picking up girls. I thought it was very funny when he's like, damn, that was good. <laughs> I have to put that down for the book for later, which is really nice. And then uh, the way it ends with the, her getting pretty... Uh, approached by uh, Kintoki here at the end was a good way segue into the next episode where things start getting a little bit more crazy. 
But yeah, overall, it was a good episode. Let's go on to episode 255, which is called Kinsan's Kintamba. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, Kintoki realizes that Tama is against him, and so he attacks her. And she, like, throws a little screw or something into his throat to stop him from being able to hypnotize people, supposedly. Um, and he, like, stabs her through the head, and he's got her pinned to the wall, and he's like, why don't you cry to your hero now? How about that, huh? And then Kentoki shows up from behind him and grabs him by the robot dick and, like, rips it off. And it's just, a like, a, screw, like a giant screw with two nuts on the end. Yep. Uh, and he throws the nuts into his eyes and the screw in his mouth and kicks him through the wall. And he just, like, beats <laughs> the shit out of him. Uh, and then he grabs Tama and runs. And he's like, I'm gonna... I'm gonna get Gengai to fix you. I don't care if he's brainwashed or whatever. We're gonna We're gonna get through this. And she, like, fakes dying to get a picture of him crying and then, like, actually dies. I'm not entirely sure. She, but she, anyway, like, they're fixing fans. her. Yeah. They're, they're fixing her back at the thing. And uh, Gengai chooses to believe him after he shows up because he's carrying the, the wounded Tama. So he's on their side again. Um, and Can- so... Gintoki is, like, convincing everyone to basically go looking for Gintoki, I believe. Yeah, well, because he says Gintoki is the one that attacks Tama. Mm -hmm. So he's, like, going around telling everyone to do it. And eventually, at one point, he has, like, Tama's severed arm and then also his metallic dick. Yes. And he's like, (laughs) these were uh, brutally taken. And no one questions that his dick is, like, a robot. (laughs) (laughs) They really don't. (laughs) No one questions at all. They're too sad (laughs) about Tama. Yeah. Um... And then Gintoki uh, shows up on top of, of a building because they're all like trying to find him, and he's riding Sadaharu. Um, and so he puts like a blow-up doll of himself on Sadaharu's back, and then he runs off, and then Sukoyo, Sachan, and Kyuve all find him, and they're like, we wouldn't have been fooled by that. And he's like, joke's on you. I was the decoy. And they fight a little bit. Um, Sukoyo gets kind of like caught in her own trap, and so a lot of the knives are going to hit her, and Gintoki shields her, and takes all the hits, uh, and then is walking away, and that kind of like, wakes her up, and then they all kind of, like, slowly break the illusion of it by, like, accidentally reenacting, like, major scenes in their pasts, pretty much, like, yeah. coincidentally. Um, and then Kintoki shows up, and they're all kind of, like, on the fence saying like wait something's not right here basically mm-hmm. uh yeah how'd you like this one then it was good it's kind of more of a setup one for the next one yeah um, for sure I, I liked the dramatic don't look back sadahari while he's like crying <laughs> and running away it's the most emotional the most emotional thing sadaharu has been allowed to have in so yeah, many episodes was... It was good. Um, no, I liked it. It was good. Yeah, it was a uh, very good. A lot of it is kind of remembering um, Gintoki in the later half. In the beginning half, I really like when Gintoki because it's a really good setup. Because he says when he's like torturing Tama, which by the way is real fucked up, and the only way that they could get away with this is that both of these dudes are robots. But still, don't fucking treat Tama this way, bitch. Uh, I like the when he's like destroying her and he's like doing this and he tells her to like hey, call for your hero now, and she actually does in, like, a very weak response. And he goes, like, Pua, that's pathetic. You think he can hear you with such a weak response? And he's fucking behind him. <laughs> Already. He heard. Already <laughs> standing, like, directly behind him with, like, murder eyes. Oh, yeah, he's like, and she's like, the thing that you don't realize, the reason you're not perfect is that he's far more sadistic than you are. And then he fucking rips off his dick and nuts. <laughs> Which is really good. And then, because he's a robot, he's allowed to completely fuck him up and throw the nuts into his eyes and uh, put the dick in his mouth. (laughs) I also like the bit with Tama where she goes to get rid of the hypnotism effect that he has. Uh, They show that the screw that she threw was actually the screws that he gave her all those episodes ago, like a long-ass time ago. Uh, which I thought was a nice touch for it. It made yeah, it... with the ribbon on them. Yeah, yeah, it was a very nice touch yeah. for it. I like when they're looking for uh, Gintoki. There's a certain sense of like 
like they feel like something's off even though everyone's looking for them and the way that they do it is maybe the in the not since his debut with the, the with the toilet has he been used to this well the reason you know that everyone's off kilter is that the freak mentions that everyone's acting freaky and that's his bit why are they stealing his bit when this is the only thing he has? And um, he literally mentioned, he goes like, what's wrong with everyone? Because he's like going, he's like, oh, I'm going to go inside that cosplay thing. Ha, ha, ha. And then you find out Katsura already went inside it himself. And then like the 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 prostitutes of Yoshiwara are like, yo, you could really work for us if you ever think about doing something like that. And everyone's like goofing off and not doing it. And he's like, wait, wait. Wait a fucking minute! What's going on here? I'm supposed to be this. You're not supposed to be this way. And then uh, Otai comes in and goes like, "It's because everyone doesn't actually want to go looking for him. Like, there's something off about this, and there's just something wrong about it." And that's when Gintoki shows up and does this whole hero thing. I like when they go through um, absolutely everyone, and he starts uh, uh, remembering them slowly. Uh, like with Suki, he says something to effect of like when he <laughs> lets go of the sword and she's like, you're going to be coming with me. And he's like, all right, sounds good. And then he has like a line about like, hey, man, as long as I'm able to get to this guy, when this is all over, you can go drag me to hell or to the bedroom, whatever the hell you want with me. Perfectly good with me. All good. And then later on, when the others show up to like start fighting back, uh, it's also really good. The way they remember him. Suki is the only one that has an actual like kind of heartfelt one with the saving of the <laughs> of the of the from the kunai. Um, and then when they do with um, Sachan's is the way that they do it is that she falls on top of him near his ass, and then she suddenly remembers seeing his underwear. And, then, like, she starts having, like, all these moments. Like, everyone else has legit moments with him. And all her moments, I feel like, were made up because I don't remember her ever saying yeah, I don't those things. ever happen. Also, the it's funny because it's her picking up his underpants and then vomiting both yeah, times. Yeah, like, oh, my God, it's his underpants. <laughs> oh, my God, it's <laughs> both this. Both of the important memories are that. Yep. Uh, for QV, it's a reference back to when they, whenever she holds a dude's hand, she freaks out. So she actually holds his hand and she remembers and she like tosses him halfway across and starts freaking out as well. And that's enough for them to remember everything. And I thought that was pretty good, especially at the end when they're like, I think they either say it at the end of this one or the beginning of the next one where they say like, hey, I think it's because if you're going to believe anything, believe the tears of your friends because they actually start crying at some point because of what's going on. Because Gintoki is also getting like majorly fucked up at this point like after he helps with suki he gets like attacked in the head by kubei's men and then he starts running off and like everywhere every direction he's just getting constantly beat up um and eventually they side they don't specifically say we're not siding with him but there's some we need to talk about it and if you're actually who you say you are then we know that you'll act a certain way and if you're not then you'll act another way and yeah pretty good episode um and it's all built up for the end of it all which will go to episode 256, which is the meaning of a main character. Go ahead, Zen. So there's a big battle going on. Um, everyone <clears throat> kind of picks sides. The The girls are standing by Gintoki, and he's like, watch watch my back while I go be the main character. And like, it's like both him and Gintoki saying that at the same time. And they clash with, like, giant anime auras of gold <laughs> and silver. Um, and then they, they kind of split sides, and Kintoki is like, all right, you know, well, we're, we're going to just throw all of you out then if you're on, if you're on Gintoki's side. And then when he says that, the Katsura and Hasegawa also, uh, like, hold their swords up to his throat, except... Hasegawa's is just like a broom handle, like it's not really a sword. <laughs> um, but they're both like, you know, we, we would we have memories of him. We, you know, you would never say that. He would never say that, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and so they all just start fighting. He does like a big explosion thing that hypnotizes everyone again. But his closest friends are able to break it a second time. And Katsura says something kind of cool, and I don't entirely remember what it was. I think he says. Um, we all have a silver sword in our soul because of that guy, and you can't trick us again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so they're all fighting, and they're they're fighting like his possessed goons that are just like random fucking random people. <laughs> random people uh, and the freak. <laughs> he did not. He did not. He was not. <laughs> he, he did. He did meet the cutoff. 
to be a guard. Kyuve immediately stabs him in the face. Oh when my the god! Because they're all like, "Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do it. We're on Gintoki's side." And then when it cuts to Kyuve for her version, all she does is smile and nod and stab the freak in the face <laughs> with her sword. I mean, um, there, there's also a really good lie beforehand where everyone's like cheering on Gintoki, and then the freak says, "Like, I actually don't remember this guy. Uh, I just kind of joined in because everyone else was." <laughs> <laughs> there's some good stuff with the freak in the last episode we forgot about too where um everyone else is being a freak and he's like what the fuck that's my whole thing yes like i said letting me be a freak it might just be because we started calling him the freak and not actually his real name but there is something a little bit more endearing about the freak actions yeah, it's- now that he's like an eager freak there's also a good bit where um him and Kyubei are trying to attack Gintoki while he's escaping, and he kicks the door into the freak, and he gets the freak's head caught in it, and then he swings the door at Kyubei, mm-hmm. and Kyubei's reaction is to kick him out of the door instead, because <laughs> it's just the freak. So he just, like, weaponizes the freak against it. It's pretty good. Um, yes. No, it was all good. All good. In terms of the freak week, this the freak week update, <laughs> good use of yeah, the freak. That's what the freak's doing. Yeah, uh, and then eventually they reveal that um, his goal is not to just take over uh, Gintama, but instead to completely uh, uh, like obliterate the series and start over because he thinks it's like he doesn't want the sloppy seconds. He says, uh, so he says this is a great final episode. You can you can use this as your tomb or whatever. Uh, but Gintoki kills him anyway because it's some sort of thing where like if he dies, it'll go off, and then also. Um, if Kagura, Shinpachi, and Ote remember Gintoki, it will also go off. Um, and Gintoki's like, I don't give a shit, whatever, we'll, we'll die together. And he, like, grabs his brain or whatever, like his head, and they're up on a rooftop, and he ties him to his stomach, and he's going to commit seppuku with him. Um, but then, and he's like, it doesn't matter, because I have Kagura, Shinpachi, and, and everyone else. The main character is everybody in this show. Uh, so he goes to, like, kill himself and Gintoki at the same time. But then Kagura, Shinpachi, and Ote all show up, and they kind of hug as he's exploding. Um, and now Gintama is over, and they they say basically like, you know, however we're separated, we'll find each other again in the next one. Um, and now there's a new series called Mantama, mm-hmm. um, and Kintoki is the protagonist, and he gets separated from his uh, sister. I don't think it's and his sister because that makes things really a, weird. Friend, it's, it's I don't a, actually remember all. Of, I don't remember how they get reconnected. The the um, it, the the way the be, it begins is that there is a little boy and a little girl, and the little girl is dying. And he says, "I'll see you again when you get reincarnated," and, and it's specifically saying um, that I want you. You, I found my scabbard. That's the reason why I said I don't think they're really related because there's a sexual connotation to "You're gonna be my scabbard" and his penis sword is oh, what he goes. Right, yeah, that okay, I'm specifically fair. bringing up to say that is the the difference. But yeah. Uh, but then it's revealed that this was all, this other anime was also all a trick, uh, and Gintoki is the teacher, <laughs> and this anime was designed to be his tomb where he could die, and then everyone could go back to Gintama. And he smashes him into the ground, and then the virtual world vanishes, and it turns out that Tama had created it or something like that. Um, and then Kagura and Shinpachi like apologize for him, and they're like, you know, let him live. You know, we'll help him make everything better but it's not fair that he should die or you know blah 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 and then um he asks gen guy to to polish him better and he's like well i can make you a shiny gold and he's like i don't want to be gold and then gang is like ah okay you want to be silver too now and then it ends yes and that's that's uh that's it for this arc how'd you feel about this last this episode zen it was good it was cute i liked it mm-hmm Good arc in general. It was a good way to come back. I got uh, I got a little, a little like, oh, this is this is really cool when they finally did the OP, but with Gintoki in it instead. Yeah, it feels. Right. I was like, oh, this, is, yeah, this is cute. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was feeling it. Yeah, I also did like the the final moments they had with each other because it also kind of feels like a pretty good statement of where Gintama is and this general vicinity of like, I'm never sure when it's actually going to be coming back. But no matter what, we'll find each other again and continue to watch Gintama. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, I really like this episode. It was a good ending to the arc. I like 
uh, all the characters getting together and being able to all the characters minus the freak getting together with Gintoki and being reminded of him. I like when Katsura brings up the fact of like how he knows that something's wrong. He he specifically doesn't know if what his memories of Gintoki are um, wrong, but what he does know is that in his memories is a specific segment back to Benny Zakura. That's right, Benny Zakura mentioned where the idea is is that <laughs> if there was ever a change between any one of them then they would kill each other. And he says, like, specifically, the reason I'm attacking you is because you're changing. You're not acting like the Gintoki that I know. And the Gintoki I know would want me to do this. So I'm going to kick your ass. We need to start eyes. putting um, hashtag Benny Zakura mentioned in every episode <laughs> of this, where Benny Zakura shows up. It is surprising how many times Benny Zakura actually comes up. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Benny Zakura mentioned. Get it going. It is uh, a good way to call back to it, um, which I think... I don't know if we talked about this or I talked to someone in the comments beforehand, but funny enough, Benny Zakura is actually the turning point for everything around Katsura, where Katsura acts this very specific way at the beginning of the show, and he stops right after Benny Zakura, and he actually becomes a different kind of character uh, in terms of the way he outlooks, the way um, and the way he kind of like is uh, post it is completely different, but either way. Go feature, go watch a previous episode to see us talk about that. Or maybe not. I don't know. Find find out. Anyway, <laughs> continuing on. It was really good. It was really heartfelt. Um, I liked the final moment where they had uh, Otai, Shinpachi, and Kagura together. Just because it feels right. Because those are literally the first four main characters. Even though at this point, Otai gets a little bit replaced by a lot of the other female characters. I still would consider her one of the main four at the beginning of them. Um... And yeah, the the new series that they make with like Mantama is really funny because it's such a. When I saw his face, I'm like, this dude looks like he would be in a series where the only where he's the only dude left, and he's looking for a specific woman. There's something about his design where I'm like, this makes sense for some kind of weird romance thing. This makes sense to me. Um, and also how like stereotypical anime it is. Like, there's even a part where she's like running and. Um, they bump into each other, and that's where his dick gets stuck inside of a plastic bottle. And then later on, he gets, like, uh, abused and thrown around and turned into, like, a, a bottle ship and stuff like that. And then he also break the, the way they break the illusion is as it looks like, the, I was like, I finally found the, sh the, 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 the scabbard to my sword. And then he fucking breaks his dick and goes like, yeah, that's not happening here, buddy. And then it reveals, like, he reveals that he was the, the girl that he has been waiting for reincarnation Shimpachi was the random girl with glasses. Kagura was there. And then there was like an ape teacher, and that was Otai. <laughs> Pretty good. And yeah, overall, I thought it was a very good way of like returning to more Gintama. It helps that we actually had to take a small break just so I could let my uh, brother hang out with his friends on his birthday. So it actually is a very good arc to come back to the series with. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> It really does. Uh, and yeah, overall, it was a very good arc. It was a good way of remembering, like, yeah. It, it kind of feels like, in a lot of ways, a celebration of what Gintoki is as a main character to the series as a whole. Of Like, he can't really be replaced by someone who's a little bit more golden and shiny for it. It's the specific imperfections that make him who he is. And when you try and, like... I think this is actually a good way to approach any main character of a series... Where if your series, if your main character is just a little bit too perfect, something about it just feels off, and somehow it feels more genuine when your main character is like this, <laughs> where he is a fuck up and he has constant actual issues <laughs> that uh -huh. make him a little bit more human and a little bit more endearing. So good way to go off of it, and yeah, that's it for the for this arc in particular. It's the end of the Kintama arc, which was like I said, two fifty three to two fifty six. Now, funny enough, next actual thing that happens is that now Gintama starts doing reruns. Well, I'm gonna cut out that bit and go back and say like <laughs> we have some, we're, we're losing Zen the John Trail, but I we just I have an idea. There will be a Shonen Archive next week. <laughs> um, and after that, uh, we will not be covering next week Courtesan of a Nation. It will be something else. Um. But then when we come back from when Zen is back from Dawn Trail, we will be going to the next arc, which will be Courtesan of a Nation arc. 
which is one of the big ones. F oh, funny enough, I forgot to mention this. The Kintama arc is actually... I, it reminded me because this would happen with Cortison. Cortison was, was most recently cut up to be put in a movie theater. Uh, they did not make a specific movie for it. They just re-released anime episodes uh, on the, in the theater, which I think is something Shonen Jump has been doing recently. I know Demon Slayer did that, right? Where they had, like, anime episodes and then they just put it up on, in a movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, they did that with Gintoki, with Gintoki, with Gintama as well, but they at least made sure to, that it was an actual arc through it and not <laughs> whatever uh, Demon Slayer was doing. They did the same thing with uh, Gintama as well. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the next arc, and we'll see how it goes. I can't wait for it. I, this is definitely one of the arcs that I've heard stuff about. I don't know what happens in it. I just heard people say, I'm very excited for when you get to this specific arc in general, so... Looking forward to it. And then after that, there will be one more arc and one more episode, and that will be the end, effectively, for this season of Gintama. And then we'll move on to the next episodes, and things get even more fun and more fun. As we start heading towards the ending of Gintama, there is, I think by three... One, two... In two weeks... Uh, three weeks' time, we will only have about... Um, hundred ep no actually after episode 265 we're going to be watching the movie that's what it is i now i can say it officially it will be the movie and then we will get back to the actual gintama anime because that is the way it followed in real time is that after 265 there was the movie and then after the movie there was more stuff so look forward to that uh and now it's time to do the ending bits of the show where i say if you want to see more zen you go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Are you going to be doing Shonen and Chill this week? Nope. No. I am not. off. This is this is my last recording. I am off work until the end of next week of any variety. Okay. <laughs> including sweet. recording. We yeah we and we really squeezed in to make sure to get this <laughs> get this in. Um, so there you go. Don't follow Zen for anything. If if you want to see Zen, go play Dawn Trail. But if you want Zen to actually come back to the sh show sooner. Please wait to finish Dawn Trail so that the cues won't be crazy for him <laughs> when he goes to play it. Um, I will be taking a break from Final Fantasy XIV to allow all the people playing Dawn Trail to actually have time to be on the server. <laughs> I am that's fair. Yeah. That's, that's very, very kind of you. No problem. I was not able to finish Yokai Watch in time, but that's because I thought I had more time than I did. I thought I had until Dawn Trail's actual release. Forgetting that maintenance was today when we recorded this on the 26th. <laughs> so I was like, ah, it's fine. I'll get it when it comes back next time. It's not a worry. Uh, in terms of me stuff, you can follow my channel uh, where we're going to be heavy. I'm going to be he Well, I say we, but it is me and my brother. We're going to be doing heavy stuff as Fago enters its anniversary. As of the when this video releases, it will be one week until... Um, the dawn of the end, as my brother just said, as the anniversary from Vago is here, and we have okay. to actually deal with summoning on the banner again. <laughs> oh, no. Summon on the banners, because this week, if you don't know, this is how it goes in Fago. Uh, most gotchas have uh, anniversaries, and it's like, man, that's really tough. This is the killer's row that they have. We have an anniversary featuring a character that is an older character from uh, a past game, basically a collab unit. And then we have Summer, which features three SSR banners, because this year, for whatever fucking reason, they decided that Summer should be even more banners than usual. <laughs> And, they, that. and the crazy thing is that next year they change it back to the old format, which is two banners, and that's it. But for this year, they decided to go crazy, and they added another collab unit who was also a swimsuit unit, which is crazy. Uh, something that they they have not done since, I think. Well, yeah. Basically, this character debuted for the first time and is likely the only time we ever get them. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. And that's then the, not good. Yep. And the other two, one of them is a big time, uh, I guess the best way to lay is like like you know how like the a god lead in old dokkan was where this one character supports the team so well that you kind of need them if you want to actually legitimately run them it's gonna be one of those type of characters she'll be there and then another character that i've been waiting two years time i saved over 300 tickets um 
which is insane, which is about 300 some minutes <laughs> to guarantee pity on it. And me and my brother will be doing a video, which I will slowly be single summoning 300 times. Oh my God. Hey, you know what? That's content right there. That is hashtag content. We have a bunch of stuff planned. Uh, originally I was going to break out a book maybe for when I'm going through it and maybe read it, but we have other stuff <laughs> planned for the event itself. It'll be a smorgasbord as we see how either here's what happens is which is the 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 way i see it either i really did spend two years time and i'm gonna have to use 300 tickets to actually get the character i want <laughs> which is the bad scenario or we have the good scenario which is uh frame one first ticket i get her and the video ends and that was two years time waiting <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to my brother's summons, which he just reminded me he's also summoning for this character. Yeah, the uh, the last uh, character to come out in Honkai Star Rail was also like a very big, important one. Yeah. So we it's also only... had uh, summon frenzy over on that side of the fence for a while too. Yeah, oh, it's always a fun time, even though it. I, I try and release videos reminding people like, hey, please be responsible. I understand that it's very easy to fall into like, hey. I see everyone summoning. Maybe I can pay a little bit more. Join in. I just literally got fucked, but you know what? I see so many people having good luck. That's how they win, man. Stay I strong. I know. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. I try and tell them, stay strong, man. It's better to not summon and just wait, because I guarantee you, your chances of getting them this next multi and the chances of you getting them after waiting a bit are about the same, to be honest. Yeah. <sighs> But yeah, fun, fun times. Uh, there'll also be just a buttload of. I'm trying to release all their also videos that are not just Fago related, even though my Fago videos have been doing very well because it's anniversary time. I do try and remember for the, for the tens and the twenties of people out there to remember to release me playing a weird ass game <laughs> for their enjoyment. I did find a weird ass game. I don't know if it will be up by now, but I found um, Super Robot Pinball, which is a Japanese only game made by the same team that made Pokemon Pinball. It's Pokemon Pinball, really? but instead of Pokemon, it's Gundam and Eva. It is literally a, it is literally like a whole bunch of different uh, uh, characters from different robot series all in one. I think there's about 60 different robots and 25 different enemies of types of it in there. So I want to check it out and be like, yo, here you go. Because I found a, an English patch for it. So, you know, I'll be checking that out. And, yeah, that's about what you can expect. Uh, and that's it for Shonen Archive this week. As always, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Um, we will be back next week with something. And it's time to end the show. So, Zen... Say goodbye, son. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>